Ethnos means an ethnic group and that's what this game is about. It's not just about different races warring though, it's about various races banding together to help their kingdom are, isn't that nice? I'm Rolf from JTRPodcast.com and I'm going to show you how to play Ethnos. This is a game for 2-6 to six players, plays at about 60 minutes, it's designed by Paolo Mori and is published by Come On. You would draft the help of various fantasy races and use their powers to control kingdoms and gain glory over three ages. There are different setup rules for two to three players, but I'll just look at four to six here, so put three tokens randomly on each space on the board in ascending order. Players take control markers of their colour and add one to zero points. Randomly pick six tribes and shuffle their individual decks together. Merfolk, trolls, giants and orcs require additional setup, which I'll go into later. Pick a random start player. The game is played over three ages. During the start of a new age, each player draws a card. Then turn over a number of cards on the deck equal to twice the number of players. Split the remaining cards in the allies deck, shuffle the dragons into one half and put it under the other. On a player's turn they either recruit or play a band. To recruit, either draw a face up card or a card from the top of the allies deck. If you draw a dragon card, set it aside and draw again. Play a band of allies, play between 1 and 10 cards, all from the same tribe, which is their name and picture, or kingdom, which is their colour. If you have 10 cards in your hand, you can't recruit and you must play a band. Put the band in front of you, choosing which card to be the leader on top of the stack. If the band has more cards in it than the number of control markers in the kingdom matching the leader's colour, add a marker. For example, if you have two control markers in the purple kingdom, you need a band of at least three with a purple card as a leader to be able to add another control marker. Then you activate the leader's ability. I'll go into those later. Any cards left in hand are discarded, face up, next to the main board, available for selection by any player. Play continues clockwise. When the third dragon is drawn, the age ends immediately. At the end of the age, all players discard all cards in their hand to the discard pile. Then you work out and score each kingdom for that age. Ties are shared equally, rounded down. In age 1, first place scores the age 1 point value. In age 2, first place scores the age 2 point value and second place scores the age 1 point value. In age 3, the points are awarded to first, second and third in the same way. Then all players gain points for the size of each band played during the round based on the table shown on the board. All played bands of allies are discarded, the deck is shuffled and a new round is set up. The game will end after the third age after which the player with the most glory wins. The there are tiebreakers, most control markers on the board, then largest band played in age 3, second largest band played in age 3, etc, etc. Let's look at the abilities on the cards. Centaurs, if you place a control marker on the board using a band with a centaur leader, before discarding cards, play another band from your hand and activate it. Dwarves, when scoring for the size of your band at the end of a round, each tribe is considered to be one larger, so a band of two with a dwarf leader will count as a band of three. Elves, let you keep X card in your hand where X is the number of cards in that band with an elf leader. Giants let the player gain 2 glory whenever they create the largest band with the giant leader on the table, even if they had the largest band already. The giant token is added to the largest band to show this and at the end of the age the player with the giant token gains glory as printed on it depending on the age. Halflings. You can never add control markers to the board using a band with a halfling leader, but there are twice as many in the deck as other tribes. Merfolk. Move your marker on the track a number of spaces equal to the cards in a band with a merfolk leader. If you pass a mark, put a controller marker in any kingdom. At the end of each age, score the board as though it were its own kingdom. This board doesn't reset at the end of an age. Bands with the Minotaur leader need one less card to place a control marker. When playing a band with an Orc leader, the player may also place a marker on the Orc horde board of the matching colour kingdom of the Orc leader. At the end of each age, players may empty their board to score the number of points shown on the Orc board. Skeletons count as wildcard for adding control markers, but are discarded before end age scoring and can never be a leader. Take a troll token up to the number of cards in the band with a troll leader. The total value of troll tokens a player has breaks ties for kingdom scoring at the end of the age. Wingfolk can play a control marker on any kingdom regardless of the colour of the wingfolk leader, as long as the band is big enough to place the token in that kingdom. And finally, Wizards, after discarding your hand when playing a band with a wizard leader, draw a number of cards from the deck equal to the number of cards in that band. That's Ethnos, a set collection area control game. Please like this video if you found it useful, share it to let others know about it, and subscribe to the channel for more how to play videos as well as other board game related content. You can find me on Twitter at JTR Podcast, and you can find my blog and podcast at jtrpodcast.com. I've been Rob, aka Just the Rogue. Until next time, keep on banding together.